We are live on Facebook and I have combed my hair for the first time since Sunday. <laughs> it's uh, absolutely ridiculous. So anyway, um, a lot of entertainers and uh, performers are doing their craft on their live videos. You know, they're doing these concerts, you know, quarantine concerts. Uh, and uh, they're doing magic or whatever. Well, I got nobody to hypnotize, so I'm quarantined with nobody around, so what am I gonna do? Anyway, uh, all right, so it's an Ask Me Anything. Uh, welcome aboard to those of you who, uh, this is my third one. Uh, those of you who have attended the first two and here for the third, you guys are awesome. Uh, new followers, appreciate it very much. Thanks for stopping in. A uh, Couple of things I wanted to uh, give a, shout, a late uh, birthday shout out. Well, I mean, I talked to her yesterday, but my sister uh, turned 50 yesterday. Uh, and uh, so that was awesome. So happy birthday for her. Obviously her birthday <laughs> celebrations were quarantined inside of her house. So happy birthday, my sister turned 50. She's gonna kill me when I have announced this publicly. Uh, but, but that's okay because it also means that I'm like 45, so I'll be 46 in August. Anyway, uh, lots of questions in the last couple of weeks, um, which I always appreciated. So if you guys have questions, please ask them. I'm gonna try to keep the scrolling to a minimum and try to get to every single question. So if you have asked your question and I haven't answered it yet, give me time. Don't ask it six or seven more times. It's just gonna clog the feed. Uh, just ask it one time. I'll try to get to it, I promise, okay? All right, so if you have any questions about hypnosis, about the show, about the state of Las Vegas, which I'm planning tomorrow to actually drive down the strip and I'm gonna get it videotaped, or I'm gonna film it and uh, show you guys what it looks like. Uh, it is, my understanding is it's like a ghost town. I don't know, I haven't been uh, down there yet. Uh, so this is the first time in my career, well, no, not in my career, um, in the last, is in my Vegas career. So I've been performing in Vegas for 13 years, and this is the longest stretch that I'm about to go without doing a show. I've taken a week off before, uh, and I went to Hawaii, that was several years ago. Um, I've taken a week off to go to Canada uh, in the last couple of years to visit some family, but other than that, I, it's been 13 years since I have basically gone more than seven days without a show. Today is, well, I did a show Sunday, so Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then tonight I wouldn't have a show anyways because I'm dark on Friday, so I've got four shows in a row. By next Friday, I don't know what I'm gonna do with myself. I'm gonna start having to hypnotize the birds outside. But anyway, all right, so you got some questions. Uh, if you have some questions, fire them away. Uh, maybe I'm not seeing them, my feed's not working, um, or you're not asking them. Um, all right, so people have emailed uh, my office asking about what's happening with my Hypnosis 101 training and the stage hypnosis training, which is supposed to happen next week. There is no class because nobody's allowed to enter into the casinos. The casinos, I don't know if they're just locking the doors or if they've put plywood <laughs> on the windows and uh, if there's graffiti already, I have no idea. But uh, basically there's no class, so nobody's allowed to travel here. Uh, so what I've done is I'm actually gonna be recording the classes in an online module form and they're gonna start releasing April 1st. So if you still wanna register for the Hypnosis 101 class, we've brought back the early bird discount. So it's 40% off again. And just go to my website, marksofart.com and go to the training tab and then you can just click and you can sign up for uh, the Hypnosis 101. And the Hypnosis 101 class is um, kind of a three day uh, class that teaches you about your subconscious mind, teaches you how to uh, learn basically how human behavior uh, the emotions modify human behavior, teaches you the science of the mind, teaches you how to hypnotize, so you can hypnotize your kids if they're at home for a week now <laughs> and they're uh, circling around like vultures and you can't get any work done. By all means, hypnotize them, lay them out on the floor and have some peace and quiet. It is a fun class. It is uh, an introductory beginning class. It's, it's awesome, it's really a lot of fun. So if that interests you, um, sign up for it. It's 40% off. You're gonna get it in online modules. And then at the end of every module, we're gonna do a, like a Zoom group meetup, uh, Google Hangout meetup thing, whatever it's called. And everyone's going to uh, 
basically ask questions. Uh, we're gonna have a little uh, kind of a, a debriefing at the end of each module. And then you can watch these modules over and over again on your own. And then when the live class gets rescheduled, you can attend the live class, come to Vegas and train with me, and that's no additional charge. So basically you're getting a two for one. You get the online version of the class and the live version of the class. All right, let me just see here. I'm not seeing, um, for some reason, I'm not, I don't know if anyone's asking any questions because I'm not seeing any of them. There are questions. All right, Kate's telling me there are questions. I'm not seeing them. I don't know what the heck, what the heck's going on. Um, <laughs> Hockey. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not seeing any questions. I don't you, know what's going on. Okay. Scan, oh, thanks, Kate. Um, you don't want to come in the shot since you're wearing your pajamas still. <laughs> <laughs> That's our life right now. We're like quarantined with pajamas on. Okay. Oh yes. Yeah. So I don't know why I'm not getting any of these things. Do you know anything about this? Uh, anyway, it doesn't matter. Okay. Um, hello from eight nine one one seven, Chris Kid. Yeah, you're watching from far. Stay away from me. You know, I, I, I know you know where I live, so don't come and give me your COVID-19. Um, okay. I got into a verbal altercation today at Tim Hortons while wearing a Flurry jersey. <gasps> See, Flurry is a Vegas uh, Golden Knights goaltender. Um, I presume Tim Hortons, because there's none in Las Vegas, that you're outside of Las Vegas somewhere in Canada. And that's not okay to get an altercation because Flurry is Canadian and you support all hockey players. Uh, stood up for the employees who were being screamed at. Oh, I see, I see and I understand now what you're saying. It wasn't about the flurry jersey. Okay. Um, how am I gonna survive without hockey? Uh, I'm going crazy. They're actually in Vegas. They're replaying, I don't know, like the top 10 Vegas Golden Knights hockey games. Uh, and I know that Edmonton, which I'm an Edmonton fan, uh, and a VGK fan, but Edmonton's doing a, um, a whole bunch of radio shows based on like the Dallas, um, the Dallas Edmonton series back in, I think, 97. And, but I wish that uh, they'd go back to maybe showing some Stanley Cup Finals games, you know, on NHL Network and things like that. Maybe they are, but I haven't been watching. All right. What about having Hypno 101 training at my house? Um, basically creating a COVID-19 breeding ground. Um, right now, I don't have COVID-19. At least I'm showing no symptoms. I don't want it. Uh, it's uh, some scary stuff, so... Um, he hypothesized me twice. Why <laughs> does that mean that you uh, hypnotized twice? I'm not sure what you mean by that. Uh, will I do a, a show live? Uh, no, any people hypnotize? Uh, there's a, a recommended that no groups over 10 people. I mean, maybe I can hypnotize three or four people, uh, but no, that's not gonna be happening anytime soon. Uh, Vegas is closed for 30 days. I'd be shocked if it's opened. Uh, any sooner than that. Um, MGM Properties sent an email out to their entertainers that said, hey, stand by for a May 15th opening. I think that might even be a stretch. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if Vegas Entertainment doesn't start until June or July. Again, the speculation, I don't have any insider information. I have no clue. Uh, that's just what I'm hearing, so or what I feel, rather. Uh, all right, hypnosis training in Canada anytime soon. No, uh, most of the training I do is local to Vegas because everyone likes to come to Vegas, right? And I normally you know, have my show in Vegas, which makes it so much easier to use as a teaching tool. Basically, people will come to my show, see what I'm doing on stage, and then we debrief the class uh, the next morning, uh, debrief the show rather in the class the next morning. I'm also, with my hypnosis training, uh, the 101 class, or the stage hypnosis class, I'm gonna be watching one of my videos and doing like a director's commentary, what I was doing, how I was doing it, what I was thinking, why I did certain things the way that I did it. I think that'd be a pretty valuable uh, teaching tool, so. Um, Chris is saying some of the properties are definitely boarded up in Vegas. I haven't seen that yet, so tomorrow, like I said, I'm gonna drive up and down the strip and have a look, so. Um, how was the maple syrup given to you after the February 27th, after your show? Uh, I have a confession to make. Uh, the maple cookies that I received did not last 12 hours. And there was no one here to eat them with me. I ate them all by myself. Uh, Drew Brissonette, hey, hey, what's up? Uh, has anyone ever gotten physically aggressive during the EIEIO bit? Not usually, uh, because what happens is even though they're hypnotized, they don't think that um, you know, it's not an emotional, sorry, there's an emotional barrier or a guideline, there's a subconscious watchdog that inside their minds they realize that what they're doing is, 
entertainment, it, it is a parameter, there's a kind of a parameter of rules that are set that it's almost like a, a tripwire, like a subconscious watchdog that when the emotions get too heavy, they usually come out of hypnosis. And I also give the suggestion to no physical, especially with the love girl, and whenever I touch you, no physical contact with me in any aggressive fashion. I say that to the EIO guy as well, so that's built in the suggestion. So if I give them a suggestion that their name is EIEIO, then the suggestion of not to be physically harming in some capacity carries equal weight, so it's never been an issue in 27, 26 years, 27 years of doing hypnosis. There's always a time, who knows? Uh, all right, do I have any stress, anxiety, hypnosis, audio to help people relax during these times? No, you're on your own. No, I'm kidding. Of course I do. Uh, email us. Go to my website, email us, say, hey, send me the stress uh, CD. You can have it for free. How about that? Just email my office, info at marksofart.com, and uh, you can have the stress, anxiety one for free. There's a whole bunch of other programs as well. If you want those, you can buy those, but you can have the stress uh, one for free. So. It's not a CD. Mm. I, being corrected, it's not a CD, right? I apologize. Download. <laughs> it's a download. Thanks, Kate. I don't think people think it's a CD. <laughs> Thanks, Kate. Yeah, Chris said, oh, I'm stating my age when I said, uh, what did I say earlier? Uh, video, videotaping. Yeah, uh, yeah videotaping. <laughs> okay. Um, swipe left or swipe right to see tread? I don't know. Okay, I think you're, that's not for me. Um, all right. Uh, Derek Wayne Hurst. What's up, Mark? Long time no see. If I'm not mistaken, Derek Wayne Hurst is the littler guy that was in one of our YouTube videos that wouldn't give up his jacket. And the big guy says, sit down. And he sat down. If you haven't seen that, I don't know what the video is called, but you need to see that video on the YouTube channel. It is hysterical. Mike Chrisman, hey, what's up? Hope all's well. Eric Williams, uh, nice to see you. Um, how am I doing, Mark? How's Kate? Uh, Kate's wonderful. She'd come into the shop right now, but she's in her pajamas and it's past noon. I think she's been in her pajamas for three days, I think. I'm not sure. Uh, NHL app is free right now, so all the games are available. Oh, cool. So you can watch uh, all the current hockey games that are not on, unless they're playing, they're playing some old games. Um, after Corona, let's go eat some sushi. Uh, yeah, I'm game for that. Uh, Derek Bolingbroke is watching from uh, Cayman Islands. Derek is a fellow hypnotist, a uh, colleague of mine who years ago took my training. We've developed a great friendship. And uh, now I book him, used to <laughs> book him on cruise ships. And uh, he was performing and kicking ass on cruise ships, did you know half of the year last year on ships. He's based in Cayman Islands and Grand Cayman, I just saw him a couple of weeks ago, and Grand Cayman shut down and there, nothing's going in, nothing's going out. There's been a 60 day ban on ships. And anyway, it's been crazy. Uh, many different areas around the world all have their stories of what's happening, so. Uh, Kate Bevan Marks, director's commentary was great from the London training, uh, really useful, thank you. I think I'm gonna go a little bit more in depth. I mean, we did that in the length of the show. It maybe took an extra hour, but I wanna do like a, a really broken down piece. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that, it should be a lot of fun. Uh, Jody Marsh from Langley, BC. I lived in Peace River, worked at Boston Pizza. Oh my gosh, Boston Pizza. That is one thing that I miss so much from Canada is the pizza bread with the, the, the meat dip, the, the sauce. I miss that so much. Boston Pizza, maybe it's a nostalgic thing for me, uh, but I, I mean, it, was, it is so good. And every time I go back to Canada, I have Boston Pizza. And the other thing that I have is A&W because A&W in Canada is very different than A&W in America. They, they taste different, the burgers taste different, the chicken strips taste different. I don't like the new A&W Canadian chicken strips that have the, that kind of clumpy uh, breading. I used to like the old ones that had the thinner ones, uh, but there's a major difference between the A&W uh, root beer, or, or sorry, the A&W food and in Canada and the American, or the A&W American uh, ones as well. They're just not the same. And Pepsi is not the same. They use a lot more uh, fructose syrup here. And in Canada, the Pepsi is way better than it is in America. Those of you who are uh, dual soda drinkers would know that as well. So, uh, Jamie Sanders, like your sister, I turned 50 yesterday. Um, we're hoping to head to Vegas in the fall. Uh, well, happy birthday to you. 50 uh, is uh, exciting. Five more years and you get the discount at Denny's, the senior discount. 
uh, Keith Oss, hey buddy, hey buddy, back to you. Keith used to travel with me on the road, uh, one of my stagehands, and we've had so many great memories. Uh, I, you know, maybe one day I should you know, bring in some old stagehands and guys that used to tour with me and share stories about some of the craziest things that have happened uh, on the road. Because it, I mean, the stories, I probably have forgotten more stories than I can remember. I mean, I was on the road for 15 years and uh, you know, doing averaging for the last seven years, I was averaging 222 shows a year. So when you add that all up with things that are going wrong, I mean, I had a tour bus uh, and I had, I mean, I remember one time, we had put the tour bus on the road. Oh gosh, um, wasn't even on the road that long. And a bearing, uh, and I had, a, I had a, a, an MC8 uh, Crusader. Uh, so an MCI MC8 Crusader, like a Greyhound. And it was all converted on the inside. Maybe one day I should pull up the pictures and show you guys. And I pulled the trailer behind it, made all the gear, and it was set up to sleep, you know, four people. And it was awesome. And a bearing out of the accessory drive fell into the gear train and went through the gears. And Twenty-one and a half thousand dollars later to refurbish the motor, the engine. I mean, that, that was it was crazy. Anyway, so many great stories about the bus. That one, not a great one, but so many great stories about the bus. Uh, how many coronavirus cases in Vegas? Uh, Kate, do you remember what that is? I think it was like ninety-six. We're over hundred. We're over a hundred, a hundred and nine or something. Hundred and nine positive uh, coronavirus cases in the state of Nevada, and I think it's like. 80 or 90 in Vegas. That's, I mean, don't quote me on any of that. So, um, but I think there's been one, one death, unfortunately. So. Uh, how does it feel to be hypnotized? Do you feel different? That is a great question. Um, how do you feel to be hypnotized? Basically, it's almost like you have this, you're in this extraordinary relaxed state. But many people think you black out when you hypnotize, that you wake up and you have no idea what's just happened. That's not true. It's almost like sleepwalking where you're aware of what's happening around you. You just have this uncontrollable urge to do what the hypnotist says. You have this uncontrollable urge to satisfy the, the desired behavior. And when the situations are funny or ridiculous, they're usually not funny or ridiculous to the person who's being hypnotized. They might see something that someone else is doing and find it comical, but not in the same way that, you know, if someone's itching, they think they have ants in their pants. A hypnotized person might look at them and go, what are they doing? What, what's happening? Uh, that's ridiculous. That's silly. I can't believe that guy is reacting that way. But it's not, it's an emotional reaction and not a, um, a conscious reaction, if that sort of makes sense. But anyway, somebody's hypnotized, you feel normal. You feel extraordinarily relaxed. And there's this desire to do what the hypnotist says. Uh, beyond, you know, up to a point of reason, of, as long as it doesn't challenge the morals of the belief system. And I know many of you followers don't have much of a morals or belief systems, but anyway. Uh, yeah, so that's primarily what it feels like. Why do some people remember and some people don't? About 70% of the people will remember what's happened on stage in bits and pieces, or even they'll remember the entire show. But it's only about 30% that don't remember and have no recollection of it. And part of the reason this happens is because the part of the brain that's responsible for memory also is resting and sleeping in hypnosis, much like it is when you're sleeping at night. That's why when you wake up in the morning, you kind of remember a dream a little bit and then it just goes away. And after you wake up in 10, 15 minutes, the dream seems to have been gone because of the long-term, or sorry, the short-term memory really isn't participating. So similar things happen in hypnosis. Also, there's something to be said about the preconceived idea. There is a correlation between what is expected in the mind and what is what is realized what's happening. For example, someone who's hypnotized who their friend might have participated in the show and their friend says, oh my God, I don't remember anything. That, that person A doesn't remember anything. Well, person B hears that story and uses it almost as a suggestion and it influences their experience and their mind will turn off the ability to remember. And they might experience hypnosis and not remember anything either. Whereas someone else could be hypnotized and leave the stage going, yeah, I totally remember. I couldn't stop it. It was weird. I, I totally remember what was happening on stage. And they tell somebody, well, that new person could come to the show with the expectation that, oh, I'm going to get hypnotized and I'm going to remember everything. So their mind will stay more focused on that idea and that part of the memory will stay engaged and active. So there is a correlation to what is expected tends to be realized in that person. So hope that answers your question. Uh, Nikki, I've seen your show like 20 times. Thank you. That's... Uh, that's awesome. Um, I appreciate the support. Uh, I've been to your show a few times. Can't wait to do it again. Thanks, Todd. Um, Eric Williams saying hello back, like the cowboy hat. Howdy, partner. 
Uh, I'm from your hometown of Peace River and wondering when, when you hypnotize someone to think their belt is a snake and if they have extreme fear of snakes, you have a concern that they may have a heart attack. Uh, no, because even if you're suggesting something, they'll reach the point of where the subconscious mind will awaken them from hypnosis, almost like a nightmare. I've talked about this before, that there's kind of the subconscious watchdog. But if I can see that someone's really struggling, I have kind of a, a little bit of a... Uh, trick to kind of get out of that scenario. I'll just say, hey, I've got some courage pills in my pocket. Take these hypno courage pills and they'll give you a bunch of courage and uh, and help you through that. And then immediately their breathing will change and it'll slow down a little bit and they'll calm themselves down. So just as much as I can suggest this scenario, I can suggest them out of the feelings as well. And uh, so that's something that I that I use. Uh, Carrie Alex has seen your show February 9th, had a great time from Burns Lake, British Columbia. Wow, I've been there actually. I've downloaded a free confidence audio program. We'll be downloading more self-help audio. Thank you. Uh, Brent is saying, oh, uh, the Derek Hurst video with the jacket is called Derek. Uh, it's listed in the comments there. Dash hypnosis gone wrong volume three or vol three. You have to watch that video. It is fantastic. Uh, so it's great. Um, so make sure you do that. Okay. Um, Derek Marshall. Oh, hello from uh, Jocelyn says hello from Alberta. Hello. Uh, as Derek says, as you primarily define as a stage comedy hypnotist, did you ever find it hard to get people to work with you as a hypnotherapist? Um, that's a great question. Uh, no, because it's also part of the branding of, of how you approach it. I mean, because people also accept, it, 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 think of stage hypnosis as being absolutely absurd. To us, it's normal because we do this job. But if someone come up to you and you're like, oh, hi, you meet at a party, and you're like, what do you do? And they're like, oh, I'm a belly button link collector and I shape it into little sculptures and I sell it at an art market. People are like, what? When you say you're a stage hypnotist, there's not much different to that response. Hey, what do you do for a living? I, I'm a stage hypnotist, I hypnotize people. People are like, what? That's fascinating. But they accept that idea. And it's a lot harder for people who already know who you are. Uh, for example, like family members, right? You, they know you, they've known me for, as Mark forever. And all of a sudden I'm like, oh, I'm a hypnotist now. And they go, oh, I don't know. You wanna hypnotize me? Or let's say your cousin Charlie, who's been a goofball his entire life and now he goes to medical school and he becomes a brain surgeon. And you're like, hey, Charlie, you wanna saw, Charlie wants to saw your head open and work on your brain. You're like, mm, I remember Charlie, he used to eat dirt when he was six years old. I don't think I want him digging around in my brain because we have a preconceived idea of what they used to be. So all that has to do is just reframing. So if you're, I'm a stage hypnotist, but I'm also, uh, obviously being a stage hypnotist, I'm a subconscious mind expert. I do hypnotherapy and help people uh, get the most out of their lives by getting the most out of their mind and body. And those really go hand in hand. Um, so it's really not much of a, of a stretch. If you say, oh, I'm a you know, hypnotist and also a magician, that's more difficult because magic people recognize as that's a trick. I'm being tricked, it's an illusion. So I think that's a harder connection. So people say that I'm a magician and I'm also a hypnotist and they go, oh, well, what's the trick? What's the trick to hypnosis? When hypnosis is essentially science. So again, it's just rebranding on how you basically make the transition, but I don't, I don't, I don't have any difficulty with it. All right, uh, Keith says, I caught a few awesome stories about the, of the road. I remember those. Um, I remember well, the night, Keith, that we stayed at my cousin Leanne's house in Red Deer and it was like 40 below and all of you guys drank way too much and it was crazy. Uh, Dave Lavoie's watching. Uh, he was there. Um, <laughs> I don't, I don't want to say too much, but let's just say that someone drove Leanne's car home and Leanne got sick on the way home and had to roll the window down and throw up while the car was driving outside, which was fine. But the next morning, when it's like 35 or 40 below, and we came out, all of it, all of her throat was frozen to the side of the car. <laughs> Do you remember that? That was crazy and very funny. And Leanne got very sick that night. Um, I went and checked on her in the morning, and she's gonna kill me for sharing this story, but there was like, and this is disgusting for those of you watching it, but there was vomit on the walls in her room on all of the walls, all four walls. I have no idea how that's possible 
to get vomit on the walls other than levitating, like in The Exorcist, and spinning. That's really the only way that it was possible to do what was done in that room. I have no idea, but it was... <laughs> Okay, so there you go, there's the story. Uh, Brent sent the link for the YouTube video, thank you Brent, um, to the Derek video, you have to watch, it's a lot of fun. Um, all right, uh, Carlos asks, did someone save your life in your drunk driving accident? If so, what was the person's name? My cousin James uh, was traveling with me and we were both in the uh, front seat and the drunk driver crossed over center line and hit our vehicle head on at full highway speeds. And both of us were conscious, uh, vehicles were on fire, and we needed to get out of the vehicle. My driver's door, I barely remember, couldn't open obviously because it was all compressed in on my side. So James said, hey, come out my side. And he was wearing laced up dress shoes that flew off of his feet. And for those of you who don't know, I was in a real bad uh, car crash. I got hit by a drunk driver when I was uh, almost 22 and broke my back and fractured my skull and leaking brain fluid on my nose. It was a horrific car crash, very fortunate to be alive. And so I had to, James like, come up my side. So I had to climb over the console with a broken back and a cracked neck and a, a broken bone around my eye. And the only real scar I have is in between my eyes here and my forehead. Um, and then I have lots of scars here in my eyebrow, which you can't really see because my eyebrow covers it. So anyway, uh, horrific car crash. And uh, so James helped carry me out that side, but we both walked out. So I walked out of the, uh, the car crash with a broken back. And so lucky I didn't get paralyzed. Very, very fortunate. But. Anyway, um, the, do you still remember how to play Kaiser? Yeah, that was a great game. I, I think I need a refresher on the rules, but that was a great game. Uh, thanks, Keith. Um, do some people have a difficult time coming out of hypnosis? Not usually. People are worried about that. I mean, sometimes they'll get a little groggy, or, or especially if they leave the stage and kind of come out on their own, the last suggestion they might have had was to be sleepy and tired. So they'll carry that suggestion with them. But it's not, it's very, very rare. and. Because if you can make people hypnotized to do a whole bunch of crazy things, wouldn't the easiest suggestion to be on the count of three, you'll emerge from hypnosis and be back to normal? Yeah, it is. It is the easiest suggestion. Uh, Doug Taylor, do you have any opinion on self-induced lucid dreaming? Uh, I don't have much of an opinion on it because I'm not, I'm not really a lucid dreaming expert. I'm more of a subconscious uh, hypnosis uh, guy. So I don't, I haven't really played a lot with it. Um, so I, I don't really have an opinion. And I'd rather not bullshit my way. I mean, I've bullshitted already a whole bunch of stuff in this, in this live Facebook, uh, Facebook Live, but this one I don't really want to bullshit. Uh, Joe, I want to take the training, but my wife, who has hypnotized your show, won't let me practice on her. How would one practice the skills that you teach? Well, your wife is not the only person on the planet. There's friends, there's kids, there's relatives, there's coworkers, there's general public, there's, there's so many people hypnotized. If you wanna take the training, I suggest you get in it. it is, it's really, really cool, it's fascinating, uh, and you promise you'll learn a lot, it will change your life. It'll change your life on a daily basis with how you talk to your children, how you communicate with your partner and, and how you communicate with coworkers and, and how you communicate to yourself. And I mean, it is just, it's awesome. So if you, we've dropped the, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we dropped the price back down to the 40% off because of the crazy things that are happening in the world today. So if you want to get on board April 1st, the first videos will come out. So you'll get the online version of the class and you attend the free version when we reschedule the dates. Um, and that's not going to cost you anything. Just, you kind of get two for one. So if you want to register, you got to do that before, uh, well, as soon as you can. Uh, and then we're going to get the information out to you. Um, uh, Jody's asking, would you share your personal uh, story about when you learned you have such a powerful mind? Well, I don't have anything that's extra powerful. Um, we all have this ability. It's a matter of tapping into it. I learned really to recognize that, and I got challenged by it when I mentioned talk about the drinking and driving, the uh, hit by or the car crash, hit by a drunk driver. Um, I talked to my doctor on day three, and I said I want no medication whatsoever. They were giving me Toradol, Percocet, and a whole bunch of other things, and uh, the good stuff. And I said I want to do all natural healing. And he's a South African doctor, um, and uh, Dr. Francois Clausens, and he's like, Yeah, I agree, hundred percent. So he signed off on my chart and I did all natural healing with uh, no medication whatsoever and tapped into the power of the mind and I healed very, very quickly. I broke my back on August 1st of 1996 and I was playing ice hockey October 9th. And that's not to mean that, you know, I'm, I'm superhuman. It's just that a lot of the way we heal and the way we kind of shape our lives is brought on by our self-limiting thoughts and 
the average American, and I'm Canadian, but North American, the average American heals in a certain amount of time. Well, I'm not average. I'm not average. Do people, most people think they're average? No, I'm not average. So I'm gonna heal in a lot faster of time. And that's what my mindset was. And uh, I really took care of myself and uh, took a lot of um, visualization and uh, implemented that into the healing and I healed very, very quickly. So, yeah. Um, Dimitri, hi Mark, love your shows. Hey Dimitri, nice to hear see you here. Sorry that you can make the class. You're missing out. You're missing out. Uh, you need, you should be there. Uh, it's already, okay, we're already like 30 minutes. Um, I'm gonna go a little longer. Normally I don't, uh, normally I wanna wrap this up at 30 minutes, but I'll go a little longer. Uh, Crystal, been a fan for great long year, for fan for long years, longer than the 365 days. I'm just teasing you. All the way back from Knoxville, Tennessee. Oh my God, Crystal, we had so much fun in Knoxville. Remember that Halloween party we went to? We went to this Halloween, and then we, uh, we went to touring. Uh, we toured the jailhouse in Charleston, South Carolina. Oh my God. And then, uh, oh, it was the story of Lavinia Fisher. Lavinia Fisher, and it was this creep. We're on Halloween night. We're going through this jail. It's dark and we're on this tour and it was creepy and it was awesome. It was so awesome. It was really a lot of fun. And the story of Lavinia Fisher, um, I remember correctly that they, there was a law or something that you couldn't hang something, if someone may correct me on this, that you couldn't hang someone for their crimes if, they, if the woman was married. So they hung her husband first and then she was a widower, and then they hung her next. So crazy, it was awesome, it was a really cool tour. Those are some great memories. Uh, Carrie Sharp, what other trainings have you done besides Gil Boyne? How did you learn business marketing? Also, how do you get the sponsorships for the high school assemblies? Oh, that's so much content there, Carrie. Uh, I'm actually gonna go into some of this stuff um, in my classes um, that, uh, yeah, I, I trained my hypnotherapy with Gil Boyne. Uh, John Zuli is also one of my mentors and we put together a hypnosis school. So I really got training that was not kind of formal training as, as like registered for a course. A lot of it was, you know, working with a mentor and colleague. So that was just different. Um, and uh, marketing courses and things. Um, people have come through my company. I, I've had some employees that have some experience with that, um, taking some online trainings, and but we'll talk about that in the class because I want to share all that information. Uh, James Weigand, if I pronounce it correctly, hello. Uh, Christopher Kidd's asking, what's the biggest audience I've ever performed for and the smallest audience? Well, biggest, uh, I performed for Wayne Gretzky's retirement dinner. And that was in 1999, and there was 2,999 people. Uh, they wanted it to finish in 99. Uh, so hopefully nobody snuck in and messed up their numbers. But uh, I performed at Wayne Grisker's retirement dinner. It was awesome. It was an honor. It was so cool. And uh, that's probably the biggest. Smallest, I mean, do you count one-on-one, -on -one, like a, a th private hypnosis therapy session? Or I've done some demonstrations uh, using hypnosis in one person and with just a handful of people in the audience. So pretty small. Pretty small. Uh, Kathy Burris says, uh, we saw your show for the 20th time in February. No, not stalkers. Yes, stalkers. That's the exact definition of stalkers. Anyways, a uh, huge fan of Rainbow Laugh for the show. Thinking of all of our friends in Las Vegas, hospitality and entertainment industry. Stay well. Hope to see you soon. We hope so too. When we're open for business, we hope that we see you immediately. I'm sure there'll be some great deals on flights and hotels. Um, you know, People say, well, it's going to take forever for economy to bounce back. It will in a lot of places, but Vegas, I think, will bounce back probably the quickest in the country because all they have to do is say, hey, we're open, rooms are free, no resort fees, no parking, just come to Vegas and people will come. And uh, because the hotels can make the money on gambling that they don't have to actually sell the hotel room for money. That's what I think they should do when they do open. Jocelyn will take some courage pills now. I know everyone needs that. Like, if I could bottle it up and sell it, I would. Uh, what do you watch on Netflix right now? Demi, that's a great question. Uh, Kate and I started watching McMillions and it's the documentary about the McDonald's scam with a Monopoly game. And we've watched four episodes and it is fascinating. It is so well done. I highly recommend watching McMillions. It's really good. Uh, and then two nights ago we watched uh, Contagion and a couple of days before that we watched Outbreak. So <laughs> we're sticking with the theme, uh, global pandemics. But yeah, both of those were really great movies if you haven't seen either of them. And uh, McMillan's, gotta go see it. All right. Um, 
my husband and I love your show. Thank you, Irene. I sat three times in the last few years. You tell me travel to Vegas. Travel agent advise all my clients travel to Vegas to see your show. Thank you so much. People like you keep the show open. I love that. Uh, Dave Lavoie jumps in. Don't forget the projectile vomiting. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, what a crazy, that was a crazy night. That was so fun. Uh, okay, my ex managed to puke tequila all over the walls and ceiling. Yeah, so everyone's got their puking stories. Anyway, now, uh, okay, so I've went a little extra time. Um, I know there's still some more questions, but we could go on forever. Hey, Garth, where did you get that shirt? You know, to be honest, I actually wore it for you. I thought you were going to log on, and Garth is a huge Star Wars fan, and he is actually has his own Stormtrooper costume, and I believe he wears it to have sex with his wife. Because that way, you know, that's why she doesn't get pregnant because stormtroopers always miss their shot. So <laughs> anyway, yeah, look at that. He's peeing and he's missing. So I wore it actually today, specifically thinking Garth would join. So I'm happy, now I'm happy. Anyway, uh, let's do this again. I, I mean, if you guys enjoy it, um, I'll keep uh, you guys posted. Uh, usually we've been doing Fridays around noon. But as I'm not doing shows more and more often, we may have to um, do them more often because I'm bored. Uh, so anyway, uh, I'll keep you posted if we do it again uh, sooner than next Friday. But let's plan for next Friday at noon. Uh, I'll see you guys then. Uh, in the meantime, again, I mentioned, please, uh, the Hypnosis 101 class. It's a three-day class. We've got 40% off. Uh, it's going to be an online version as well as a live version when we have the class rescheduled. So you just come to that. So you get both two for one. Uh, it is an um, awesome training. Consider it. Uh, it'll give you something to do. It's a little fun uh, hobby to enjoy uh, about learning how to hypnotize, learning how to hypnotize others. We'll give you all the scripts that you need. It'll teach you about the power of the mind, teach you about how the subconscious mind works, how the uh, emotions rule human behavior, and all kinds of really cool things about the science of the mind. And it's, it's fascinating. It's really fun. Uh, consider it. Um, and uh, again, we're going to get those videos out starting April 1st. So you've got a little time to register. If you have any questions about it, email us through the site. That's easier. Social media, the comments get lost. So please go directly to my website and email my office uh, and we'll be able to answer your questions as best as we can about the training. In the meantime, stay smart out there. Stay safe out there. This COVID-19 is serious shit. And uh, don't give it to your loved ones. If you're feeling good, stay home. Watch some Netflix. Watch Marks of Art Comedy Hypnosis on YouTube. And uh, have some laughs. And uh, we'll see you on the other side. Thanks for joining. Take care.